So you want to play a set of Corsa on Linux and you do not know how to go about installing the game and making it work on Linux. I'm here to teach you how you can go about doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cogules Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nixon of Cogules. I'm the founder and the director of the Cogules Industry Spy Network and the Cogules Nation. Today, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be teaching you how to install Aceto Corsa using Linux and open source software. Now the game is rated gold on ProtonDB. Mainly it's because of how the game is set up that requires a lot of different things. Well, there is a web page that will be linked in the description below that allows you to know exactly how to go about it. I will be putting this on top for the time being. For this, you will need to get into Steam, and we're just going to hit play, okay? Now it's going to try and launch the game. Now do note this is on version 5.0-10 of standard Proton. Now this game will not work. You should expect this game to crash, but that's okay. We just need to get the file structure that it generates after the game crashes and tries to launch. And it even says right here, it will crash, but we just need the folder structure it generates. Okay, so the game has already crashed. This is good because you got the file structure that you need. Now, we are going to do a quick proton tricks. This will require proton tricks. Dash C, quotations, line uninstaller. And then the ID 244210. We'll hit enter. We should go into the wine uninstaller. And specifically, we need to get rid of wine mono window support as it says on the web page. So that is done. Mono is no longer on this wine prefix. We'll clear that because that that's a little bug. I think it's a bash bug. I don't know. Anyway, there is a directory you will have to create called AC temp. Luckily, I can just CD to it. Right here, it's AC underscore temp. But you would need this command and you need to curl to download this. But you have to already have CD'd into the AC temp directory. Luckily, I've already made it and I have .NET, so I do not need this. Instead, I'll go to step five. Once you have .NET, you'll need to run these commands. The first one, Proton Tricks with the no background wine server flag. And then the whole spiel and WinXP. Again, make sure you have the game's ID in there. Luckily, they provide it for you. And you'll need to hit Control Shift and V in your terminal emulator of choice. Anyway, we will get into Windows XP. Now, obviously, they're gonna try and say, yeah, your version of Y is no longer supported upstream. You should upgrade, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm fine. This is actually required for us to play Assetto Corsa. At least the base game. There are going to be a few extra steps you'll need for the content manager, and I'm also going to get into the content manager and the custom shaders patch. Once you are now set to Windows XP, I've already got the next command prepared. It's Proton Tricks, no background line server flag. Of course, 244210, and then shell. You'll need to head to the shell, and then you will need to change the directory into the AC temp. But once you get to the shell, this is where they're going to get you. Okay, so now that we are into the shell, they're gonna try and get you here. So you'll need to do a quick CD and then hyphen, which will bring you to wherever you've done that command. And then you'll need to do wine, and then your .NET 40, whatever. So now this will be installing .NET 4.0 offline. 
So this is going to take a little bit as well. That would be the same thing with the .NET 4.7.1 install that we will be doing here in a minute. Actually, while we are on the subject of .NET, you will see later, you're also going to need this .NET here, which is for .NET 4.7.1, as I have alluded to. But if you have no access to the archive website, well, don't worry. Just search for it, .NET 4.7.1, search for that, and then go to .NET.Microsoft.com and you'll be able to download .NET Framework 4.7.1. Now, I already have the runtime offline installer. So that's all you need. Click that and then you'll be able to place it into your AC temp file. Again, you'll need to place it right here. You have created this file in your home directory. So just place it in there and you should be good to go. And you will need to do the same process after you install .NET 4.0 with .NET 4.7.1, but there are a few other things that you're going to have to do as well. So now that .NET 4.0 is installed, you will need to do exit on your terminal. That part is done. Now they would say to do this massive command but you've already downloaded .NET 4.7.1, at least this exe here, which will be done later. For now, we need to do Proton Tricks Windows 7. That's what the Win 7 flag is. Or rather, the Win 7 option. Again, it's without the Wine Server background because it's supposedly going to slow down the use of wine a significant amount. This should make it easier. Now we're not done just yet. We're only getting to Windows 7 at this point in time. Because the next step, we're going to need to do MS Core native. That flag, if I'm not mistaken, has to do with the MS Core fonts. Now that we are at Windows 7, we will need to do MS Core native. Again, same design, same syntax and whatnot, but this time replace Windows 7 with MS Core equals native. And then we'll be going into the shell and doing the same thing we did with .NET 4.7.1 that we did with .NET 4.0. Once all of that is done, I will be right back with you in just a second. Now that .NET 4.7.1 is installed and you've exited the, the Windows shell and ProtonTrix, we're going to be combining these three here. Here's what I mean. I'm going to control C this first command here. And this is to get the visual re code redistributables 2015 version. We'll then do D3D compiler underscore 47 which will install D3D47, I think, which is, I think it's just D3D 4.7. And then we'll get that to Windows 10. So we're gonna run all of that at once. And once that part is done, I will be right back with you in just a minute. So now that everything is installed for the vanilla game, since I have Content Manager, I will quickly go through how to get the Content Manager working. First things first, you need to make a directory to the Steam config in your Proton prefix for Assetto Corsa. I actually brought in the backup prefix that I made, so we don't need to do that. You'll need to download the content manager from here. Again, this article will be linked in the description below, so you can do that. You'll need to extract it to the local files, and then you'll need to make it to contentmanagersafe.exe to disable the hardware acceleration in the UI. You'll need to do this here to set the launch location for your content manager. And then you'll want to get into the file in which actually has a set of Corsa in it. And then you can launch the game. Now that the content manager is set up, 
you'll need to do Proton Tricks C Wine CFG 244210. And then the Libraries tab, you'll need to write D Write to override the library. And then you'll need to get that done. You'll need the custom shaders patch, which is right here. You'll extract the zip into the game's directory. DWrite DLL and the extensions folder will be where content manager save.exe happens to be at. And to show you, I already have my backup prefix ready to go. Since I did make a backup of my prefix with all the settings needed, this should launch a set of Corsa just fine. And the content manager should be popping up here shortly. And there you go. There is the content manager, and you'll probably see this. Unless, of course, um, yeah. Anyway, as you can see, I've already modded the game at the wall zoo with free mods, including this Lancer and the Top Gear test track. I have also added recently the soul, and we'll want to turn this stuff on. There is, in fact, a video on how you install mods in Assetto Corsa. I will not be covering that today, but it will be linked in the description below. And with all of that, you should be able to drive at the Top Gear test track. I will be driving with a controller, but I'm going to be doing this in a practice session. Actually, nay, we'll do a hot lap. Let's not record the ghost car. And we'll have the penalties as per the usual. So, we are now going to get into Assetto Corsa. I kid you not, that's what's going to happen. And I'm going to show you the game working with everything in its right path as per the usual, right? So I'm going to be in this 2000 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 at the Tunfold Top Gear Test Track. And as you can see, the game is working like a charm. Well, minus some shader things, but that's only because of the shader patch that is being used. Otherwise, the game is working exactly as intended. This is, however, a racing sim. And if you have a wheel like a Logitech G29 or G923, then there are also things you can do to get that set up and working properly in any Linux distribution. Now, obviously, um, I do need to get the custom shaders patch and whatnot because I do need to update the shaders patch. Apparently I'm not in the correct version, which is why you don't see this sky, but otherwise, yeah. It's actually because of how Sol works. So obviously I need to do something about that and get the custom shaders patch. But otherwise, this is working as intended and I'm, I'm not that good on a controller which is why it's better to have a um, wheel with force feedback. But I thought I would demonstrate it for you. I will be doing more like this once I get this set up and that will be done next week. So be on the lookout for a video of me playing us at El Corsa on Linux Mint. That said, if you'd like this episode and want to see more like this in the future, you can do this one of five ways. You can hit the like button to show your support to the Coyoles Nation Hit the subscribe button to become a member of the Coyles Nation. Hit the bell icon to be notified when new episodes arrive every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also comment on all of your videos and share this channel with your family or friends. Did I mention to ring the bell once you're subscribed? Yeah, that will give you a notification into when we post a new video every week, as I said, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Thursdays, so do check your local time to know when the next video comes out. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I am out of time for today's video. Thank you, and good night.